Light God's presence in our midst today and to give us a special blessing. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and uh, just before you stand, uh, uh, I take opening prayers seriously. Um, it is not just to dot the I, cross the T, and do a token prayer. I pray um, in the context of Deuteronomy chapter 28. 1 to 14 that says God wants to bless and I want God to bless the tourism and attached industries of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So when I pray, I pray with the expectation that God hears us, that we will bring ourselves in accordance with Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 to uh, 40 particularly. And as we bring ourselves into that frame of blessing that God will bless. And so let us stand now and acknowledge the presence of God meaningfully. And so Almighty God, as we come to do this, this day, and Father, to headline this event, Father, we come into your presence. This is an acknowledgement that we could do nothing that would have ultimate success unless you are a part of it. And so Father, I invoke your presence, O oh God. And Father, as I invoke your presence, I invoke your hand of blessing. And I ask, O oh God, that in this particular subsector of our economy, that we will experience the blessing that you promised in Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. You said that you will bless and that what we will have will be full and run over. Father, you promised to defeat and to cause us to overcome our barriers, our obstacles, and even those that are at enmity with us, that though they will come at, in, at us in one direction, Father, that by your power they will be scattered in many. God, that's the power that we are invoking and we are asking to be with us, particularly now with the presenter of this lecture, oh God, Father, that you will endow and give great insight, oh God, and Father, that what is shared here uh, is not something to applaud, but God, something that will be implemented, and Father, as it is implemented, that as a seed, it will grow great blessings for our country. God, we thank you, you are a God of blessing. Now bless this function through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Richards, and please, before you take your seats, on for those who have sat already, we'd like to invite Mr. Shane Wynn to lead us in the National Anthem of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you, Shane, and you may have your seats. And Shane filled in for Mr. Rodney Small, who, as you would note on your programs, should have been doing that item, but was unavoidably or is unavoidably absent this afternoon. And so I offer an apology for Mr. Small, as I am going to also offer an apology for the absence this afternoon of our Honorable Minister, as well as our Permanent Secretary and the Assistant Secretary, who is acting in her absence, as well as the Chief Executive Officer of the SVG Tourism Authority. We extend our apologies for their absence, but I suspect they will be joining us virtually when they're able to, or if they're able to this afternoon. Dr. Cecil Richards, Dr. T. Jennifer Edwards, invited guests, tourism partners, and that includes our system ministries, our partners in the tourism and hospitality sector, our colleagues from 
the various arms of the Ministry of Tourism and uh, my colleagues, as I still call them, from the, the various media houses who have joined us and who have been so gracious in their assistance over this month that we have been celebrating Tourism Awareness Month in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Other specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are joining us virtually or otherwise, today we welcome you to our tourism lecture. And for those who have a program in their hands and those who have seen the flyers, this lecture is being held under the theme, Rethinking Tourism, Forging Linkages for Economic Sustainability. I would not want to go into much detail at this time because we have somebody who is going to ably do that in a few minutes. But for those who have been following tourism and who have a keen interest in tourism and who know what has been happening in tourism, the theme of sustainability continues to be key on our agenda. And we will hear from our keynote speaker why this is critical to our sector's development. And at this time, I will give you a brief introduction of the person who has graciously agreed to present this lecture. Even without me reading her biography, I can say to you that she is going to do an excellent job because she has the expertise, the experience, and she knows the product. She knows St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and she will tell you, I'm sure, she has been spending a lot more time with us recently as she's critically involved in the development of a new master plan for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which coincidentally will be presented to us, to key stakeholders, tomorrow. And so it is my distinct privilege to introduce Dr. T. Jennifer Edwards who is a member of the Board of Directors of the Bahamas Tourism Development Corporation and is a senior advisor in tourism policy, sustainable tourism policy, planning and, a devel and development. She works across the Bahamas and the Caribbean CARICOM region, supporting the efforts of international and regional agencies such as the Inter-American Development Bank, the Organization of American States, the OECS Commission, and the Caribbean Tourism Organization. Dr. Edwards also works directly with national governments and the private sector on efforts related to tourism sector policies, legislative and regulatory strat strategies, sorry, public sector reform, institutional strengthening, MSME, tourism expand and sorry, SMME tourism development, tourism product development, community heritage, creative industries, and the blue economy tourism expansion. With the impact of COVID-19, Dr. Edwards has utilized her expertise and for over 25 years of tourism expand sorry, of tourism experience to advise in the restoration and resumption of business operations in tourism. Among others, she contributed to the development of a joint tourism policy COVID-19 emergency plan for CARICOM and continues to support governments across the region in the revision of their tourism development policies and plans. Dr. Edwards is a firm advocate for rethinking tourism development to ensure that it is guided by targeted strategies for climate and risk res resilience, job creation, revenue generation, linkages, and inclusive growth that allows effective engagement of MSMEs and spreading of tourism ben benefits. With these principles, Dr. Edwards led the development of the CTO Caribbean Sustainable Tourism Policy and the Development Framework for 2020, which is intended to guide the development of Caribbean tourism for the next decade. 
Dr. Edwards' con contribution to tourism development has not gone unnoticed as she was recognized by the Caribbean Tourism Organization, One Caribbean, which acknowledges Caribbean citizens who contribute, contribute to making the region a special place to live, work, and visit, and we know why. Her efforts were, were also recognized by the Inter-American Development Bank with an award for innovation in linkage creation between agriculture and tourism. Please join me in welcoming Dr. T. Jennifer Edwards to the lectern to address you and to deliver this lecture. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the introduction. I'm pleased to be here again. As uh, you just said, I've been in St. Vincent for a lot, um, regularly in the past few months, and that's a good thing. So my topic again, as I'm going to be talking to addressing, is rethinking tourism, forging linkages for economic sustainability. And, oh, which one? And I am starting by asking everyone a question. So the question is there. Should tourism return to what's, what, what held pre-COVID? You know, right now we're all talking about post-COVID. We need to get back. We need to get back at least, get back to how things were just from the beginning. And you'd realize this question is now being asked worldwide. So it's, it has been discussed at a regional level, UNDP. And it's the theme basically across the region. And that's the question I'm asking. So I'm in keeping with what's consistent regionally and globally. It should tourism return to what was he what held pre-COVID. And so what held pre-COVID? Right there, if you look on the screen, you will see that I have tourism arrivals. When you're looking at tourism indicators of how good tourism is doing, one of the things you look at is always arrivals. Yes, and what that's on the screen, you'll see a high, a high blue bar in 2019. It's probably very small for you to see, but you see just before COVID-19, and that's the data for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Just before COVID-19, St. Vincent and the Grenadines had what, almost 400,000 visitors. So right now, you want to get back to 2019 figures? I am happy to see it's immigration customs, <laughs> yes? Would you want to go back to 2019 figures? So that's the question I'm asking. And the second question is then, what does question one really have to do with the topic? <laughs> we link, we thinking tourism. I'm asking you, do you want to go back to pre-COVID? And, and then, well, what does that have to do with the topic? So in terms of the topic, what it's going to, I'm going to be answering questions by clarifying certain concepts, clarifying these concepts, and then at the end we'll see what we are actually talking about. So it's the key bubble there that you see in the first one, rethinking, rethinking what's really important, then the business of tourism, then you see sustainability, and you see linkages. So let's see how the question deals with that. So thank you so very much. Um, as was introduced, I am Jennifer Edwards. I'm happy to be here. And I like to say while I am also Bahamian, living in the Bahamas, I'm originally from Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago. And I say, yeah, Tobago Keys borrowed the name, or did we borrow the name? <laughs> Tobago, which we, but you know, if you extend the Grenadines further, Tobago might just be part of the Grenadines. So, you know, I'm happy to be here again this afternoon, and let's see how we can, in lecturing, let's see how we can link all together. So, in, for today, what I want to look at is why we think. What is this we think? What's the, what, what what is this we think now? What you have seen over the years is that in, in economics, in, in life and in globe, we have gone through several concepts. You would have heard one time we were talking about, we were talking about new paradigm shift, new paradigm shift. Then we went along from that, we went 
come right into today to re-engineering. We have gone through, now at the end of COVID, we are, think, we are rethinking. So I want to just look a little bit on, on why we think, then why economic sustainability, which is another key concept in what we are talking about. Then linkages, what's the big deal, why linkages? Then some conclusion with some thoughts. And then it's definitely, I think, a lecture, although it's a lecture, and I have been a lecturer at UWI for years, and you know, we say lecturers like to hear their voice because they just speak. But while it's a lecture, we want to give time for discussions, definitely discussions and feedback and uh, input. So the first thing, if we look at going back, we think, we think means let's really step back and look at what happened or what was held, what held before, 20, before COVID. Because that seems to be the point for all of us now in the world, regionally. Everything, it's like our lives revolve around COVID. Let's see what's happening post-COVID. You may not be able to see clearly the, 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 the chart on the screen, the bar graphs, but basically what that is showing is that if we look since 2019, 2021, 2022, 2020, we'll see whatever is below the bar. We'll see how tourism was, and we've seen that we are having a really slow and uneven sort of economic recovery. But in all of that, the Caribbean is still recovering better. In, in, in all of that, you're going there. You'll see the Caribbean is re coming back, be getting back better. And when you look at the best years for tourism, it's just so ironic. The best years for tourism in the region and for tourism in St. Vincent happened to be 2019. H how is that possible? 2019, the most arrivals, the whole region saw over 30 million visitor arrival. That was at the peak. We had GDPs, all of you who like to deal with economic figures, but simply put, it was the best year. When you look at stayover visitors, I think there were about, if I'm seeing clearly, there, there were across the globe 1.5 billion individuals. We continue to see that there were about one in 10 jobs created from tourism. That sounds really good. One in 10 jobs created. We are seeing that there's, um, uh, in terms of spending, we are seeing up 20 billion spending. When you see these figures, it's like, wow, this, this, this industry is doing well. This is doing well. And I want you to think of yourself, this industry is doing well. If it's doing that well before uh, 2019, and even I said, when you compare St. Vincent, put St. Vincent next to the Caribbean and the globe, yes, yeah, St. Vincent is on its own, but it's, it's there. It has room for improvement, but it's, you could see that it it's did well in 2019. So definitely, it's the best year. If it's the best year we ever had in tourism, definitely. It's something we should all strive to go back to. But again, I start asking, should we go back to what is held? And this year is just, I just kind of highlighted St. Vincent, just pull St. Vincent out to show uh, what happened in St. Vincent? You see that long, nice red bar. I actually pulled out the yachting sector because the yachting sector was the one that was very buoyant during, during um, COVID-19 in St. Vincent based on the data we have. So you see of all, in 2019, all visitor arrivals, and that would be stayover, cruise, yacht, everyone who came to St. Vincent, 2019, very, very good. And just the subsector of the yachting, you'd see 2019 high, but you'll see 2020, there were still um, visitors. And I guess that's the policies of government at that time where you could actually um, uh, stay in, on, on ship and, and what you said, quarantine together, cluster together. Then in 21, it dipped, then 2020, 20, things coming, coming again. And we are seeing across the region, that 2022, some countries have already recorded 2019 figures. And I'll say for the Bahamas. In the Bahamas, it was, I, I, in this year, we actually, 
met, met the 2019 figures. Now, bearing in mind that stay over coups and everything, so the, generally, the United Nations World Tourism Organization projected that between 2022 and 2024, we will start to see, we will come back to the same position we left in 2019. So it's almost, we should just, just click our hands and say, okay, I'm wishing for 20, between 22 and 24 to pass. Yeah, then we'll be back to 2019. So, okay, um, some Caribbean countries have seen it. But then the question, the question there, what, when you look behind what was happening pre-COVID, some questions came up. And this quest, these questions were highlighted at the UNDP's um, discussion on it in 2021, where one of our regional economists that you would probably have heard of, she highlighted certain things. And it's the sector has been growing. Clearly, the sector has been growing without limits, because you hear all of these wow, this industry is really doing good. But what you're seeing, when the arrivals have been increasing, um, spending has been increasing, but when you look at the economies of the region, economic growth has not been increasing. So how, how things work? If your, your, your economy, you're getting a, your, your sector of your economy is expanding, well then, Ooh, all, all economies should be wealthy. It means that growth, you anticipate economic growth in, in the country. You should be economic sustain. Ooh, we should all be wealthy. We should all be, well, let me not say that. We should all, we should all be doing quite well. But when you look back at as much as we are doing wealthy, very good in the Caribbean, something is happening. When you look at the per capita income, it's still not expanding. It's, it's like we are stuck at 2007 data. 20, so 20, 2007 and the per income, the per capita income is still almost the same. So we are seeing a growth, it's like we are seeing a growth in, in tourism, but income wise, it's just, it's just happening. It's just going. So the question then is, who is actually profiting from the, the 60 plus million visitors that come to the Caribbean every year? Because when you think of the Caribbean, it's 32 of them come stay over, then another just as many come and by sea. So if what's happening in our economies, if that is happening, so the question then is, uh, 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 we should not be going back to that. Yes, we should be going back to increasing arrival, but should we really be going back to should we be going back to that? We need to see economic growth, economic sustainability. We need to see, and I can ask everyone in here. You all must be a, have a pocket full. Like the bank is probably overflowing because Saint Vincent did quite well in 20, 2019. So Saint Vincent did quite well. It means everybody in Saint Vincent should be doing quite. Well, but, and I'm just using St. Vincent as, an, as a little example. I am thinking where I am, we are expanding, but I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't know, you have the money on you. So the question then is, who is actually, who is actually benefiting from these 60 million plus? Who is actually benefiting? So then, we look at, there's something quite interesting with, with St. Vincent, and of course the region as well, but just to point here out, you see, you see a lot of arrivals, but yet you see the expenditure isn't on par with the arrivals. So that's one little sticker point that I'll put as, as I move on. So the question one that I asked again is, should we return to what held pre-COVID. And the quote unquote from our regional economists is going back to pre-pandemic level is the wrong way to go. So it's what going back is the wrong way to go. And that is where we come. Let us all rethink what is happening. COVID has taught us a lot. It, you know, it taught us to sit back and think again. We look at our lives. We look at what is important. And so you'll see there what is really important. Should we go back to 
to yeah should we go back to pre-covid as is should we so um you know as i as i said covid has taught us a lot it has taught us that great we could we could have remote we could take time to relax and you realize what is happening even in with employment a lot of individuals in certain employment they realize they're not going back they don't need to go back there anymore people are now thinking no relaxing and having a good work life balance is, is much more important and more and better so there's a whole rethinking going on it's not only from individuals across the globe it's from governments it's from you think of, of you and what you're seeing so for from an economics for tourism and the idea now is we should take a pause and rethink we simply don't just want to go back to 2019. Let's see what the issue is. So I have other questions come out of that then. Isn't tourism supposed to help with economic growth in the first place? How come you, you, we, we know and we have seen that tourism is supposed to help with economic growth? So why is it tourism has been expanding, expanding in the Caribbean, and we, we are basically stuck in 2017 economic growth figures? Question again, let's rethink something is wrong. And then, well then, what is the cause of that? Why is that happening? And how do we resolve the issue? Those are such uh, million dollar questions. If I can answer them, I can just give you the answer right now and we're good to go. But it's good to ask questions. Let's think, think back. How, 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 how is that happening? So again, we press a pause. You see there, you press a pause button and let's think. Let's think again, yes? Press a pause, so we on pause. And then I give, it's so easy, it's such an easy thing, and that's so naive, it's so easy to do. It's easy, easy, easy. All you have to, f to do is figure out what is really important, understand how tourism works, and then fix it. That's so easy, I mean, anybody can do that. <laughs> It's so easy, my goodness. If that, okay, let's say it's easy. And figure out what is really important. And what is really important? We have seen since 1992 now, we're going back to 1992, where the world got together and realized the same thing in 1992. You know what was happening across the globe? And you remember 1992 is where we the world officially introduced the concept of sustainable tourism or sustainable development. So what was happening in 1992? You saw the same thing that we are seeing today happening, but even much more so. We saw one, countries were getting economic growth, they were getting money, their G GDPs were looking well, but what also happened? People remained in poverty, and the example used then was Brazil. Brazil showed some very good um, economic figures, but Brazil had economic poverty was rampant, and then the climate was just, the, not the climate, sorry, the resources, the environmental, the natural resources was just catastrophic. So at that time we saw, we, we, we made, a, the whole globe made a decision, listen, we do need to have money. But we have to think that in producing, you, 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 you use resources to produce anything. So to get money, you, you need to input. So the resources you use are people and the environment. So think of it where you're working, you're producing something. So for economic, economically, the idea now is we need to continue growing economically. We need money, we, ah, we need money for everything. You need money, you need money to trade, you need money on barter, even when you're bartering, no, that's an exchange, you're bartering. You need money, you can't get anything anything somebody is giving something so we know money is important and we're not just saying money you know finance is funding we're saying economic economic we change the word economic sustainability we need to be economically viable we need to continually have an economic growth but we need to make sure that the resources of the country that are used to produce this wealth 
remain intact. We also need to make sure that the people who are benefiting, the people who are involved, that they too are also, um, their integrity, their culture, their life is also sustained. So around that time, we, you would realize now we have those three principles of economic, develop, economic growth and development. One, and hence the word sustainability. So when you hear economic sustainability, you think automatically of three things. You're going to make money, but you're going to make sure the resources used, which is the environment, the environment, and now we are seeing climate change, climate change and the environment. Because of how we use the environment, what has been happening? So you're going to make sure that happens. And you're also going to make sure that there is sociocultural sustainability as well. You have to think about people, their culture, their values, their working conditions, how they live, the value of life, the livelihood, the quality of life. You cannot just be money only and, and, and then the individuals, that's not how it works, how it should work. So that was then 92. We have gone, we have gone through, and we have gone to always hearing about the environment. So everything we do, we talk about the environment, we talk about the people, and you know, you hear climate change, you hear, oh, we must be, you hear all of that. Okay, excellent, that's what we, what we want. But you know what? At this time, especially in the Caribbean, the call now is, listen, let's sit back and see what economic sustainability means, and let's just see this whole thing. Are we actually now getting the money? Did we focus too much on the environment? We have to. Did we focus too much on people? We had to. Did we f but we need to have money as well. So for governments to work, governments need money. Government need to pay salary. Government need to do social work. So now, do we think is look at economic sustainability and look at in all of these economic sustainability, these three things. And what is important? Still importance mean high quality. So for tourism, you still need a high quality tourism because tourism is an export. Unf you know, it's interesting. It's easy when you're, if you're making a bottle of water to send it out. You could see that. You say, ah, great. The water, the quality standards, all of this for export, it's, it's set. Tourism is actually an export, but because people are coming to the country to participate in tourism, we tend to kind of overlook it in a bit. It's because the idea is wherever new money comes into the country, that's an economic activity. Export, water export, helps you to bring new money in. So we, now, we, then, we then know that we need high quality products and services within the tourism sector. You cannot just overlook. You cannot just, oh, anything goes. So quality and um, we continue being climate smart. We have to continue be resilient and to be able to bounce back. Because as you have seen, and, and St. Vincent, I think, is such a good example. Because you had, we had hurricane. Then you had a volcano. Then we had COVID. Now everything all together. So you're talking about the resilience of an economy. It has to be. It has to look at that. It has to take care of that. It has to continue empowering people and being inclusive, because who is making the money? Everybody needs to make the money. Everybody needs to benefit from from what is happening. Uh, inclusive growth empowerment, decision making, all of that. So what is really important? Figure out what is important. So for us now, sitting back and rethinking, and I'll ask everybody, what do you think is important? What is important for you? What is important for tourism? So economic growth that protects, promotes, doesn't damage the environment, it's sociocultural resources, it's part of these are all part of the pillars of sustainability. Then the second thing, so great, we know, yes, we should sit back and relax, but the, the question we ask is then what do we do? And so as well, figure out tourism. What really is tourism? If we, we have 60 million visitors coming to the Caribbean, then what is tourism? And so I just want to spend like a few minutes looking at what tourism is. And we, we, 
we know then tourism is actually made up of and transportation so you have to travel to the country in the first place you have to travel when you're in the countries and for island chains like the Bahamas where I'm from and St. Vincent you have to travel within and it's not simply taking a car from here to there until we begin joining all our islands with a bridge we have to think of another means of transport and then we have attractions, sites and attractions. We have meetings, incentive conferences, facilities. We have travel services. We have about eight of them, which one I'm missing, the tourism services, events and conferences. So we, we know now what tourism is, the system. So again, all of this is rethinking. Yeah? If you're going to rethink clearly, you better understand what it's all about. So. We know that these are what you'll call the subsectors of tourism. So if somebody is telling you, oh, to tourism, to it's not only hotel, it's not a hotel only. It's not, you know, you look at visitors, it's not a hotel only, it's not a transportation only. So it's a it's a big, it's a big circle that you're looking at there. And this I want you to remember, even when we are rethinking and, and, and re strategizing, because the idea is to rethink, figure out what tourism is, figure where the gaps are, and then fix it. So now I have this chart and I'm showing you something in the tourism world that you will always hear talked about the value chain value chain and supply chain and this is where we are moving towards the linkages value chain and supply chain so we have all the subsectors of tourism basically feed into what is called a value chain and the value chain I'm gonna and you see when we say chain chain is always a link and so we starting up to come to the, the link linkage the value chain always starts now. It's on a chain, and, and, and as we know, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. So why the value chain? The value chain actually takes the approach from the visitor, and it is for us to analyze every single thing at each aspect of that value chain. So when, we, when, when you say value, it's because at every element along the way, you're adding and you're creating something for the visitor. So the first, the first step is that the visitor has to understand and know that there's somewhere to go. So if someone is sitting down in their little home in Iowa, they have to know that, oh, there's some place called St. Vincent and the Grenadines that you can go to. So how do they know that? Who, who, um, what do they do to know that? Where does the money, just follow the money trail. Then when they do that, they have to, to book they have to travel, they have to then come here, they have to eat. So all of these, every part of the chain, you're adding a little more. And important in that chain is the supporting partnerships. And this is something quite important because what we, we, we as I said, we have to look at all of these chains and see where the weaknesses are. So partnerships. Partnership is very important. This is where you have NGOs, public sector, private sector, everyone. And I'm just so glad you wore your uniform. I'm just going to be picking on you because from the first person that is seen, it's immigration, right? The first person that the visitor coming sees, generally, if you're coming by your landing flight, let's see here, it's the immigration person, the immigration officer. The immigration officer is part of the supporting value chain. That has an impact on tourism. So you'd see how every single individual is linked. Every single individual is linked. And we'll talk a little more about that. Let me just go on. I want to make sure I'm on time. And this, what I did with this um, slide is just to show that the visitor, the visitor, the value chain, the tourism sector, how it works. The visitor comes and the visitor is using all aspects of that chain for it to work. For this chain to work, you need the support of private sector, public sector organizations. So it's a big chain. Look at every single part of the chain. Have we been focusing too much on accommodation, for instance? And that's a question we're going to ask. Where, if it's only accommodation we are focusing on, it means we are we, are, we, are, we, are have, we have all the accommodations, but what happened to the other party? The, the link on accommodation is 
will be as strong as the other links. So it's like the accommodation link might be heavy and everyone else is down below there. So let's, I'll explain about that as we go along. So what is supporting that value chain? We look at the suppliers and then this now you're going you're gonna to hear the term supply chain. Mm. I think the word chain, 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 everybody loves the word chain, everything. But essentially, do you know, we are all linked in some way or the next. So chain again. What, so we look at this whole value chain. We want to look at all, everything that is happening in that chain at every single step along the way. Then we want to look at the supply. Who is supplying that chain? Who is supplying the value chain? So you'll hear this whole thing. Sometimes they use interchangeably, you know, the tourism value and supply chain. So you have the manufacturing sector. And now, remember, we are looking at tourism as a whole, all the subsectors, not just accommodation. So the manufacturing, who is supplying the, the, the accommodation, easy to use, who is supplying the beds and the chairs and the, 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 the photos, the, the, the paintings that go on the wall, the food, who is supplying that? So we see manufacturing, we have entertainment, we have creative industries, we have construction, agriculture, fisheries, IT, uh, medical. We have a lot of different economic sectors in any given economy. So who is, are we utilizing all of those economic sectors? Who is actually supplying? Where, where is the issue? So. I will sort of give you a little, um, this next slide that I'm going to be putting up might seem a little busy, but I'd want you to spend your time and look at it, you know? Because what I'm going to do is kind of like give a f an idea of all the various elements of the supply chain, of the value chain, and then look at it and figure out where you are, where you are in it. Are you in a public, private, NGO, agency are you in 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 accommodation are you a distributor so let's see oh my gosh even me i cannot see it <laughs> but, but let, let's see on the side so take it are you seeing you see you seeing through me listen oh you don't have one behind oh these people have everything covered okay so let's go let's you seeing so what happened? As I was saying, the tourism value chain is important because if you could, you could analyze it, then the role of stakeholders in providing tourism services and products that meet the tourists um, at different stages of the trip. So you want to see who is providing what at every stage of the trip and then how you can either, how you can fix it. So you could analyze each link. You can see what the challenges are at each of the link. You can see then careful management of each link would help to maximize the performance and ensure that all of the sector everywhere is supported. So let's see, the first distribution. And so in distribution, that's where the first part, the visitors in Iowa are sitting. It's cold. They really want to get out of the, uh, go to some place warm. How do they know? So before the trip, you have the promotion, the distribution, the um, any information that you are given to the visitors. And there you would see most countries have a tourism office overseas to help as well. So you have the tourism authority, SVG tourism authority. You have overseas offices, yes? Three, great, so that's helping before the trip. Then you have in that, you have the media, you have trade shows, you have social media, word of mouth, direct, all of this before. So, okay, who is doing what in that area? Oh, great. The second area, transportation. So you have transportation to the destination. Who is in that? You're looking at yachts and watercraft, vehicle, air carriers. Then local transport. When you're here, who's providing local transport? 
car rentals, sea ferries, boat transport, taxi, then accommodation, all types of accommodation. And this is one of the areas we always say to look at because we own, we tend to look at one type of accommodation. If it doesn't say big, large resort, well, you're not saying anything. We're not even accounting for you <laughs> because you big, large resort. So even in the accommodation sector, we say, look closely at the accommodation sector. Is it? Who, who is? Who is in the accommodation sector? And bear in mind that the accommodation sector is not only large hotels, um, hotel chains. The we think is what is made up in this accommodation sector. And you know what we have seen in the region? We have seen a growth of what you call the informal sector because of the sharing economy. So on the sharing economy, you have VRBO, Airbnb, HomeAway. You have about 15 different shared economy platform, which allows individuals with one room, two room, to be on in the, the shared space of accommodation services. So, okay, maybe we're not accounting for them. That's why we don't. We, we haven't been having economic growth. So all of the that you then have food and beverage, and every food and beverage, ev um, I had a. a for me, a small, well, not a little joke, I had an experience working in one of the Caribbean islands and I was talking to the stakeholders in the food and beverage area. And so I'm saying, well, we want to support incentives for food and beverage, those in the food and beverage, so we want to know who is serving visitors and who are not. And every single individual in that room said, listen here, we are all, we are all in tourism, we all need incentives. Because we have our, our bar, our, we say rum shop, from <laughs> we quite know what you say. We in tourism, because the visitors come to us, we need to also have um, incentives. Every single individual. So it's like across the economy in the Caribbean, everyone at some point is in. So food and beverage, you cannot discount anyone. It, it, then you have, of course, the outbound transportation, sites and attraction owners. You have, when you... Another important part that we overlook, it's the supporting agencies. So for something to work, you really need to have a tight and a very effective um, public, private, and combined supporting agency across the board for that. Because supporting agencies and especially public sector, provide the environment for things to happen, the enabling environment. So that keeps everything up. That's the knot that tie, ties everything together. Then you have every other thing. You know, when you look at the tourism, if you look at all of those areas in between, basically, it's everything that you will use as an individual is needed for tourism. Everything you would use. You know, it's I eat, I drink, I sleep, I go, Play. I go to this everything generally because you inviting someone to your home, everything there. So we look at the value chain, and I want to give you because it's a lecture, and I hope by now I should be saying how many fingers are you seeing? If anybody say less than how many, it means you are half asleep. I don't want anybody to be half asleep. You know I am. Um, I have this joke that I've been in lecture lecturing for years and years and years. And when I get to the, if I have a three hour lecture, if I start off, I never wear a watch. So I have a three hour, somebody has to keep track of time because like I say, lecturers like to hear their own voice. That's why I'm gonna make sure we stop. And if I ask, what time is it? Even if I was, the, the lecture is from two to five and I start, at, I start on time by half an hour and I want to know if to change the topic. I ask, oh, anybody tell me the time? The, the students will always tell me five o'clock. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's always five o'clock. So listen, whether, it, whether I start for 15 minutes, half an hour. So listen, it's not time yet. It's not five o'clock. I just look at the time. So let's see. I want to tell you a little part about, to help us understand a little better, I want to tell you about schools, schools of thought and the thinking that has gone through the thinking that has gone through to where we are now. It's something for us to think on and still try and remember. So there was this school of thought before that, listen, what we need to do to benefit more from tourism is to look at leakages, 
the term leakage is coming now and and just stop it, cap it, no leakage. We don't want any leakage from our economy. So let's see in all of the value chain what sort of leakages we have. The first thing is who is selling our, our tourism overseas? So we don't want any, anybody else to sell it beside us. <laughs> OK, that's one, cap it. Then who is providing transport? American airline. So what do you want to do? Don't let American airline fly to the country. Put a cap on it. No American airline. I just want to tell you, I'm going to the extreme to see the, the word leakages, what happened. Then accommodation, investment. Oh, we have Holiday Inn, not owned by us. No, we don't want that because that's leaking. Any, basically, any money that the visitor has to spend that does not come into your economy is a leakage. So, for instance, even when the Tourism Authority is overseas promoting, you're spending, that money is in the economy, it's leakage. So, you know, you see I have three X's there. X's for leakages mean it's a good concept. But really and truly, it's not practical. Because, oh, let me not say that. I hope I don't have any economists who will come at me after, but we can discuss it. It's an economic discourse. You look to see what revenue is lost. You look to see what is the net earnings from tourism. Those are things for the department, planning, economic unit, you know, you look to see. These are discussions. But the reality of that, you have to be, your economy has to be so well developed and advanced that you close yourself off from the rest of the world. That really, we have tried it. It's not working. So what you want to be aware of, though, is that at anywhere along the state, along the visitor, the visitors coming, there will be leakage. And you want to see how you can decrease leakage. But it's not something to spend and go to the extreme. You know, you want to encourage buy local, so you don't that. You want to encourage, um, but you don't say no. It means then, let's take for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you'll have to own your own plane. You'll have to have planes from every destination. You'd, it's, it, you'd have to own your own every year. You'd have to own everything. That's not the way the world works. And that's why you'd see recently that the, there's a, a, a basically, you, you, you have to open up your economy. You're opening up your economy. And the, you'll see preferen preferential trading agreements. They are no longer. We operate in a global environment. You have to compete. And you have to make sure that you meet standards, that you, you, you go on uniqueness, and compete like everyone else, you know? But we want to understand that school of thought talking about leakages. It's a, it's, it's a concept. And because we've been in the academic world, we look at it and we analyze it. And in about 15 years ago, uh, 15 or 20 years ago, these were data. Um, some researcher thought it was nice to talk about economies that are totally import reliant. Because if you're totally import reliant, it means you're importing every single thing. And so you, money is just leaking. You're importing everything for the economy. If you are heavily import reliant, it means that you have a good manufacturing base. You still have to import um, you know, luxury items and so on. If you are totally, Im if you are um, import, um, if you, depending on the level. So it, it was given a level between how dependent you were in import goods and how, um, not so dependent you are. But in any event, the whole idea of it is it's good to know. It's good to know that there are things called leakages. It's good to know that we could try to reduce leakages along the way as far as possible. That would mean supporting our manufacturing, and it's a very valid area that we must look at and we must um, continue it. But you know where we have gone now. The next school of thought is that, oh, I had this slide that's long. Unemployment is still, I can skip. The next school of thought is, listen here, how about linkages? You know what? We may not be able to own the airline, but we could probably have a linking arrangement with them where we could, when they here locally, they could, we could supply the food that they have to use on the airline. You know, it's, let's look at the value chain again. 
and link. But even before that, I'm going to give, we, we actually went through, there's a school of thought that went through is what are we really linking with? What it is we are linking with? So you see I have that box here. It's a chain of just about everything. And one of the things that has impacted us in the region, and which showed, I'm going to show why we were thinking of one particular area, is that, you know, there's the general agreement on trade and services, the World Trade Organization. It's something that all countries sign on to. And if you go back and examine that document, you will see that when they look at tourism services, they're really only looking at hotel and restaurant. You know, I told you that, look at the value chain. They're only looking at hotel, mainly hotels and restaurant makes up tourism. So it's no wonder we were all guided by that, as we call it, because we want to then make sure we have hotels, and mainly hotels, for us in the region. If we look, GATS, Tourism for GATS meant that is the general trade in services hotels. So basically, it's if you want to link, you have to link with a hotel or a restaurant. See how you're going to provide them with spa service. See, see what you're going to do. And that is open up to the whole world. The GATS hotel, so you can have any trade, any, um, any investor coming in. And therein, I think, where we have focused. We have spent time focusing on the accommodation and certain types of accommodation. But now, even that, we have to rethink. We want to rethink. We want to rethink it all. And so I come back to, finally, all of that. Now I come back to what I was actually asked to come here to talk about. Rethinking tourism, forging linkages for economic sustainability. So one. We know the idea of why we were thinking tourism. We have seen tourism growth, but economic growth has been at a slower pace, almost at a standstill. So we question something is wrong. What must we do? In the post-COVID environment, we now know that we definitely need the best approach out of everything schools of thought is to try to create linkages in the economy. So basically, that's the answer, that's the end. No, it's to try and create linkages. And so what is linkages? If goods and services used by the tourism industry are produced domestically, tourism has linkages with other sectors of the economy. So it's, let us see how we can we can use as much. We don't have to worry to, I, in my opinion, we know, understand leakages, but we don't have to worry too much about leakages. If you could develop more linkages, because one, we do need foreign direct investment in our economy. We cannot say, don't let any foreigners come, don't, that's, no. We do need to import we do need to have a, a solid import and incentives for importing because we just do not, our economies are not that strong as yet to have, as not even our economies, our population couldn't, cannot facilitate import substitution. And I'll tell you, in our English speaking Caribbean, the only country in our English speaking Caribbean is really Jamaica. Why? Because Jamaica has at least 2 million people. No other country, not even Trinidad, I don't even think Trinidad and Tobago reached that two, two, two million yet, but at least I'm certain for Jamaica. Has, for import substitution, you know what it means? If you are going to, to Im, not import microphones, you should have a large number of individuals in the country who could, you could, who could buy the microphones, who you can, who can help in making the microphones and so on. So you need to have like a, 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 an economic base of people to help the economy to go. So we don't have, all of us in our countries, you don't have that level of um, individuals. So we still need to import things. And I always have a little back and forth with, with um, 
policymakers is that you have to give incentives. You're thinking incentives mean leakages. No, incentives mean you're getting your business done because you can't do it otherwise, yes? So we have, in the post-COVID environment, we want to make sure that economic linkages are well. And, we, and if you look there, we have a lot of different economies we can link with. We can link with, oh my goodness, we have rental, we have public works, anything that's happening in economy, you can have linkages with. So coming then to what we would call is, what's the, how do we go about it then? What's the next question? We understand, we need to rethink, we understand the value chain and supply chain that there are areas in it that we should look at. And then we, we sort of agreeing that we should really, to get our economy going, we should try to look more at linkages. And we should develop strategies, a policy and a strategy framework for linkages development. And this is one of the areas that was done for the tw in 2020 with the Caribbean Tourism Organization Sustainable the policy, sustainable tourism policy and development framework. And I use some excerpts from that in terms of moving ahead. So what should we do? Really and truly, you should have a policy and a strategy framework for linkage, for um, linkages and economic sustainability. So the idea is to develop and strengthen the links between tourism and other economic sectors in order to what you so to, to to minimize the um what well, to maximize the multiplier effect and when you say the multiplier effect we say anytime a dollar a visitor brings a dollar in that dollar goes through the economy because the dollar is paid let's say to the housekeeper gets a part of the dollar the housekeeper helps to pay the nursery where her child is is, is um at school the nursery helps the they starved, so it just percolates in the economy, you know. So we want to be able to maximize that multiplier effect on the economy. We want to encourage economic growth, and we want to deal with poverty. We want to deal with with the life, the the health, the livelihood of people. You know, you want economic growth so everybody could benefit. And then goes in the post-COVID environment, focus on linkages. So for, so which one? Oh, sorry, I made an error. Yes? One, two. Oh, okay. So in, in a strategy, there are two things we are saying strategically that should happen. You should enable intersectorial linkages. So there should be a priority set to enable. Now, these are policy statements, and they are very easy to make a policy statement to say, hey, listen, you should rethink, and you should deal with linkages for economic sustainability. And you're sitting, well, OK. Yes, I agree. So you should enable intersectorial linkages. Yes, I agree. You should um, have value chain maximization to ensure community benefits. What do you do? So the priority should be enabling intersectorial linkages and value chain maximization. So intersectorial linkages and value chain maximization. So then how do we do that? What are some of the suggestions for that? The, once that is done, the idea is to make sure that every community benefit from um, linkages and they are engaged in the value chain. So we have, for instance, enabling intersectoral linkages. One of the policy, the strategy, st strategic objective or the strategy is support the development and the expansion of the economic sector or activities to service the tourism industry. So we know what the tourism industry needs. Let's see if we could e expand. Let's put strategies in place to expand that. And we look on the side, the creative industries, the tourism industry. Creative industry is one by itself. You have musicians. We had, some, we had a very good um, pan player this morning. So how could you make sure to expand that by, for the visitor? link with, let's say, the easiest, let that be a link. So we have more local entertainment. We use our 
we, we use our what we have to link just let tourism be a one big link and then you ensure in terms of value chain maximization another strategy that is coming out even more to ensure that communities whether it's the marginalized communities the indigenous people rural communities everybody should benefit from tourism and everybody should be engaged if you engage at a community level you engage people then you will be able to have create linkages so the idea is go about linkages and 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 showing sectorial intersectorial um growth so we have and i wrote them all out so those of you you know i always say it's a powerpoint presentation <laughs> not a thesis, not a paper not a paper written but still i wrote them out so i could remember what to say to you and one let's see what is a strategy one of the things that we are lacking in the region is proper research and data to make decisions so we could sit here and we see oh look at how much um the economy hasn't been growing but really we do need data so research is very important you have to determine the viability of certain things to happen so research and data we say one of the things that we always say in the tourism sector is to facilitate tourism satellite accounting as what we have right now if you want to know how many people arrive tomorrow oh i just have to go to my immigration colleague right there he will tell me oh yes this amount of we have arrivals 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 we we not lacking for that that is simply to help with marketing to know who is coming but when you want to do economic growth now we need more data than that we need to know who is where who is in what and so we say utilize satellite tourism satellite accounting it's something that ministries of tourism statistical offices working with ministries could do tourism we need first of all clear research then we need public private partnership guess what you see how the whole of the sector goes if the public sector is doing one thing the private sector doing another and they at loggerheads with each other nothing is going to happen we will just continually going around go around in a circle so at the united nations level that was one of the greatest call we have to you realize in the value chain it's supported by the public sector the private sector the public private sector partnership we have to make sure that works so make sure there are more um uh, avenues interventions where you can have public private partnership one of the things that we have seen happening across the region that works quite well is tourism destination management councils so that is one of the latest thing now where you have both private and public sector on these councils and they sit together uh, argue but they sit it together to see what is happening in tourism see what shortfalls what there is and that council doesn't just mean oh the hotel association ministry of tourism it means community members it means um, NGOs and interest groups that are for a particular destination and they help so that's one area but public private partnership another area to help with linkages and and economic sustainability is policy legislation regulation policy and policy and legislation has to support so we are saying you want to make sure that the business the businesses because you have to own that probably comes last but you have to support and encourage um business development you have to make sure you have a right policy framework for that then you have i would say the others um capacity development and skills development and this is something where you have to make sure that the individuals in the country they are aware they are aware of tourism the benefits of tourism but you help skills development and let me tell you an easy thing or something that was in the bahamas in the bahamas we realized that um architects architects imagine that architect that's a economic sector in the in in your economy who would think what architects have to do with anything the ministry of tourism held a competition for architects 
And the idea was to train architects in how to design for tourism, how to support um, locals who are going into the tourism business because architect, you would realize if you look at the architectural designs that we have of, of let's say some of the resorts that are coming in, who are actually doing the designs for those resorts? Where, where are the designers? Where are the architects? Before they even start building, are they lo using local architects? Well, then we need to link from the very concept, we need to start linking architects. But architects in our economy are very skilled in building homes and building according to the pocket of our individuals. So let's see. Architects now have to know how to build for envir environmental designs. I think it's including now in architectural studies, but environmental design. So they had a whole get a link with architects. Then another one is training chefs to actually incorporate local local products in their in, in what they are doing. So we the Caribbean have been making making advances with that. So you want to use local food stuff. And I, I was happy to hear about uh, um, a show that was in St. Vincent, showing people how to use St. Vincentian products to make to make food. You know, but remember, the audience you're dealing with are high-end visitors. If you're going after high-end visitors, you can't just slap that show anything. You still need to put show things. As much as people are not going to compromise, you know. Then community-based tourism. That is about, we'll speak about that a little more. That's one of the sure ways to get economic growth spread across the individuals and to get linkages. And another one is encouraging medium, micro, small, medium enterprises. So you see, those are some like strategic objectives that we'll see. How do we encourage um, linkages for sustainability and community-based tourism? I just wanted to point that out. Interestingly enough, all the research and all the data has now shown that community tourism they help to, to, to enhance the quality of life and of livelihood of people. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want. They also help with community tourism, also help with job creation, income generation. The same things that we are talking about, that we are, we are lacking, it means that to get the economic growth going, we need to look at these areas. It also helps to enhance small and medium enterprises. So all the things, the strategies we talk about, at the community level, you can get that going. And community tourism also help because to help with the environmental resources protection as well. So that terminology, community tourism, it's something to be looked at and really advance further to deal with rethinking when we're rethinking linkages and economic sustainability. And um, now I'm getting to the five o'clock time. <laughs> so now I say, I just wanted to close with some examples from Jamaica. Jamaica, um, we, I always say in the Caribbean, we should look and see sometimes what Jamaica is. is there, because their economy is bigger. Of course, you just adapt things to you. They actually have a, a whole, what they call a tourism linkages network. They have, they have set priorities, they have set um, um, priorities, and then they have set objectives in terms of what they're going to do. I'm not going to talk about it, but just in your own, you can go to their website. It was established by approval from a cabinet, a cabinet decision, and it really was designed to create and sustain linkages throughout the productive industries. And really, it's sustainable linkages between the tourism sector and all other productive sectors. So they, there's a model out there that you know, we have that we can look at. So we look at that. And then what we, what happened in the Bahamas? Bahamas doesn't have a, only 300,000 people, not much. Jamaica has a lot. But what, what was done at, we did, or what was done at the Tourism Development Corporation there is actually an officer allocated a linkages creation officer. So you know, it's okay, we have someone specifically for linkages and linkages what? They look at agriculture. In your economy, you look to see what's the weakest area. So linkages with agriculture in the Bahamas, we have a lot of imports. So linkages, getting farmers, getting farmers to, getting restaurants to serve. We have gone even to an extent where we got restaurant owners, to, uh, hotel owners, work with farmers, and then they told the farmers what they wanted and when they wanted it. So we needed peppers by 
in in August. Farmers know, okay, we'll plant peppers by August. We have because there's always been availability, um, quantity and quality. You have to still keep certain things. So there's a linkages creation officer and when I look at St. Vincent and the Grenadines, it's, I'm happy to see that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has in their economic and social development plan actually addressed this, that one, linkages must be um, looked at, and two, community tourism. Community tourism policy must be created. So I, I think conceptually, in looking at, at St. Vincent, the concept is there. But if there's a time to actually have the concept now into operationalizing the concept, certainly it will be now. And I also look to see, I can say that we've seen some community groups across in Vincent and the Grenadines. So, and then we've seen um, that the rivers, beaches, parks authority has also engaged community groups in some of what they do as well so there's certainly the 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 starting power for it is there but the whole community tourism is a discipline in itself it requires a, a it's an entire discipline and i think that is one of the areas we look at specifically in the plan so um, i'm coming down to the question if you look at that little house you will see there are seven windows in that house. That house is the Caribbean Sustainable Tourism um, Policy and Development Framework. Basically, it's saying you'd see number four specifically says linkages and value chain management. So that's a specific policy that all Caribbean countries now in the post-COVID time is being asked to operationalize. So we knew it before, we thought about it before, but now when we're thinking, let's look at it because of what we are seeing. So you'd see, but one of the things that it's asking for, it's institutional support for it. So now every, every economy now have to look to make sure that either the government, the, mainly the Ministry of Tourism, is there an institutional framework, is there someone to help support that area because nothing happens by accident. We could say, oh, look at all those windows. The idea there is to make sure that everybody benefits from tourism. That is how you're going to see economic growth. If all communities, so you will see I have there the United um, Nations, the World Tourism Organization says, now everybody in every host country or everyone should be benefiting from tourism. We are, and realize the focus is now on us. You do not, you cannot say, oh, the foreign people getting all the money. That should not be the focus. That is the frame from it. Let us work together and let us know by doing linkages see. So we have all of those areas. You do need institutional support for that. And so my question then, maybe there need to be a specific, is there a specific linkages creation and management officer at the Ministry of Tourism? In, <laughs> maybe um, because you would say, oh, it's under our portfolio. We can look at it, but you know what? Because of where it's at, now ministries, the same way in the Bahamas, we, that position of a linkages creation officer was recently implemented, you know? And so the question is, should there be a linkages creation officer? And I ask you now, my closing question is, should tourism recovery return to what held pre-COVID? Rethinking tourism, forging linkages for economic sustainability. It's really now up to you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Edwards. Before we get your thoughts on it, I'm going to invite our friends from the Harmonite String Band to entertain us for about five minutes, and we are going to then get your thoughts and comments and answers to some of the pertinent questions that Dr. Edwards just asked us. So, Harmonites, welcome and thank you for your patience with us this afternoon.
We appreciate you. So, Dr. Richards did his part. Mr. Wynn did his part. Dr. Edwards did her part. The Harmonites have done their part. So, it's now time for your part, which is the question and answers. And uh, we are going to start. Dr. Edwards ended on a note that I think we should begin on. Do we or should we return? to tourism pre-COVID. I think in all of the presentation, she used that as the baseline. What, where were we pre-COVID? What happened? What did our destination? What did you do as tourism stakeholders, directly or indirectly, to contribute to tourism development in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, to contribute to the sustainable tourism development thrust in our country, and to create the linkages and to ensure we have that economic sustainability, we have to answer quite a few of the questions that she asked us. I'm sure you have your own questions, but we would like to hear from you as well, and we would like to start on that note that she ended on, do we or should we return to tourism pre-COVID? So please don't disappoint me, I'm told. We have some key partners here. So immigration, we, you were singled out a lot, but we have customs, we have port authority, we have hoteliers, we have media people, we have tour operators, we have community groups, we have business people, we have a wide cross-section and we have staff so for all of the other stakeholders who are um, teachers teachers we have people in the education sector um, and so I think we have a think tank think tank here and we can start at that point so we'd like to hear from you what are your thoughts and we'd start with should we return to tourism pre-COVID? Who's going to start the ball rolling? We have someone on this end, so we'd like to hear from you. Marlon is going to assist you with the microphone. Just tell us your name and just where you, who you're representing, or if you're just you just registered to be with us this afternoon. Okay, good evening everyone. Yeah. My name is Homi Butte. Um, I do craft. And I, I am answering that question by saying yes. We should refer to tourism. And part of my answer, and my, I will add to it, that we should go on about it by looking at the strength and the weaknesses of tourism 
and the strength we build on and the weakness we build up. And where, where there's need for help, we help, and where there's need to expand or extend, we extend. Thank you very much, Ms. Liu. Did that say right? Thank you so much for your contribution. Dr. Edwards, any feedback? Yeah, I, oh. okay. Oh. I, I like, I like, um, I, I like what you said, and, and the thing is, I like that you, know, you said you're a co-op vendor as well. That's one of the areas definitely for linkages. And yes, I, I like the spin you put on it. You did say the idea is to look at tourism and wherever there's a weakness. Exactly what you say, strength, wherever there's a weakness, strengthen it, wherever. So you can maximize what was happening before and minimize. So, because, and that's the whole idea, to rethink the whole we think. So, we think and see, in your area as a crop vendor, you, you um, make your own crop for you, right? So it's utilized local, you're making your own, utilize this, this type of linkages you're talking about, so that we can have much more people involved in the tourism sector. Thank you. Any other con Mr. S my former classmate, Mr. Stapleton? Thank you very much for failing to the floor. First of all, I would really like to commend the Ministry of T Tourism and Doc here for facilitating having this workshop. It's really commendable for us to all meet and discuss the way forward. Now, quite coincidentally, I was in Union Island about two weeks ago. and string band parties and they were saying to me how so depressed they were about what is happening in tourism mainly because they have so many ideas to take tourism and to see how tourism is to grow but nobody from the offices from tourism is coming to have a conversation with them again it ties directly what Doc was speaking about in terms of community tourism. And that in itself is the foundation if we really want to find the solutions and to know what to do. The ordinary man who's involved in the tourism sector, who's like a frontline worker, the ministry needs to send out their foot soldiers to talk and to have conversations with these people. And here we're going to get a lot of ideas as to what we need to do, what we did in 2017, what happened during COVID, and where we need to go on school. That's my first point. But secondly, now we recently had a massive Quincy Expo Fair, where all our tourists, our small business people came out and they were display, but mainly to the local center. As soon as that, Expo Fair was finished when we had over 140 small business people. The tourism, the first cruise ship landed in St. Vincent. What a waste of opportunity. That fair, that event should have extended or there should have been linkages between the Ministry of Tourism and certainly the Invest, the invest SQG to ensure that, that as soon as those boats are landed or maybe that our, our tourism, our small business people can get opportunity sales and income generating opportunities out of that. I mean, yeah, to sell to our local economy and have our local people come to the fair is one thing, but to earn foreign income, that is what is going to boost our economy and income generation from the sector. And my third and final point, I'm a bit concerned as to what work the Ministry of Tourism is doing to take tourism to the schools, especially the school children. I know, for example, like Cumberland and all those areas, children are a big player 
when it comes to tourism and making tourists happy and satisfied with the tourism product in itself. So let us utilize a bit more the schools and the school children to help sell our tourism. Thank you, Thank you very much, Sinclair, and your points are all well taken. Um, they're well appreciated, and I think I can answer them, but I will leave them to people who maybe are a little more okay with some of the details. I, I must say, in relation to the first item that you, the first, um, that you mentioned, we do go out. I know the team um, in the Ministry and the Tourism Authority, but I, I suspect there needs to be more visibility and more connectivity and all of that, and Dr. Edwards alluded to that in the in creating those linkages, your communities are critical. Um, Dr. Edwards, I'm not sure if you want to speak now or let Joelene speak a little about the schools and then we can have Dr. Edwards give some feedback. But there is a program in place and I think our communications manager is best poised to speak about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to let you know that in terms of Community engagement, we have training in the community. So, for example, in this year, we had um, several different types of training in Union Island. For example, we had the product development, we had um, tourism education, customer service training on Union Island. Additional to that, we usually go to the schools, we have tourism education program. Right? So there are things that we do, but as you said, when it comes to tourism, we have to touch everybody. And I do agree that there are ways that we can try and reach everybody, and we will continue to work on that, right? I appreciate it, Geraldine. And I, I do think it is something that we will have to make a note of, because I think outside of the training, if I understood what you were saying, it was not just doing the training, but hearing from our community, um, activists, people who are engaged in craft or whatever, or even the average person, what do they think or how do they think we can take tourism forward sustainably? Um, in relation to the point with Invest SVG, is anybody here from Invest SVG before I? No. So I can't speak to why it was not extended, but I will ensure we have that close network with them. Um, in fact, we are on, in, in a policy framework, we sit on our, their board, they sit on our board, in the Tourism Authority, vice versa. So it is something that I will certainly share at that level, and hopefully we'll be able to make better, or ensure that we, we have things coincide better moving forward. I agree. Just to note, however, that there are some of the, the, the producers, some of the craft and uh, other small business people who were at the expo who do have, whether it is a shop or a stall or something, at the cruise terminal. So I know there are people who were a, a part of the expo who have a business or who are able to showcase and to sell their product at the cruise terminal. But I appreciate what you're saying, maybe that having that a greater presence during the cruise season or certainly affording our visitors that opportunity is something that should be considered. But we will convey that and hopefully some, there will be some, some mid-ground at least. But I'll leave Dr. Edwards to, to... Oh, there's one thing, something... Tourism cannot do everything on the other. It doesn't matter how big your the partnerships. So for instance, on the tourism in the council, what you call these destination management council, education and awareness is not only left to the hands of Ministry of Tourism. You work with the Ministry of Education, you work with your hotel and tourism association, and you work with private sector, you are, it's, especially for a chain of islands, this is similar to the Bahamas. In so many islands, there's so much that tourism can do and know, but education and awareness is a very important part. And 
yes, meeting people, and this is where the destination councils would come in. I mentioned about destination management councils. These are very large bodies that hold both private and public sector. You get to talk about little things that you wouldn't hear. See, see what you spoke about? This the string band that, that could have been heard in that council, and then you work accordingly. But the trip with education and awareness, to be honest, five public private partnership is that everybody expects the Ministry of Tourism and World It's not it's not new here because of the region. So you need public private partnership because awareness is very important and education. I think you definitely do we have any more comments on that particular subject before I, I pose a few other questions. In the meantime, one of the other questions that Dr. Edwards asks, are we, have we been focusing on the right or the wrong part of the value chain? Any thoughts on, on that? Or any thoughts on anything else Dr. Edwards shared? then you need to expand the thinking. Because every time you think of tourism, we have been led by that, we have been led to tourism. So we focus on, and not only that, if you think of hotels, what type of hotels do you live So now we know there are a wide variety of our hotels. Accommodation is what we should be saying. Huh? So who is and how is, how, how is the economic growth being spread? So if we, we open up the value chain areas, to all of the areas, then we have more spreading of benefits. You know, and this is not to say um, traditional hotel is not that. We need all. So it's what part of the value chain we've been looking at. And that's the idea of it, to open up the value chain and think of tourism as everything. Food and beverage, creative industries, everything. Anyone, any thoughts on that? I'm, I'm probably going to put one of my colleagues on this spot, but I know in terms of accommodation, we have been, uh, we are an emerging destination, so we, we have been trying to learn the lessons, good and bad, and to see how we can build on the best practices and the things that. Or, or competitors or neighbors probably have already experienced. And I suspect because we have had the privilege to start with small boutique hotels and to start with properties that are not necessarily the brand names that I suspect if, if most, I can't speak for everyone, but I suspect most people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines have an appreciation of accommodation and not necessarily now um, just a particular brand or a particular type of property because of the, 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 the basis from which we started in accommodation. Am I right, Avanel? Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. And oh, I want to jump in here. Yes, that's something so good about St. Vincent, which is different from the other. You actually have a whole, you only have small and medium enterprises. Yes, sweet. Currently, yes. Which is, which is good. I mean, like most of our properties are on the 40 rooms. Yes, so that's excellent. So you have, so then the value chain is probably as well as Yes, Yes, so in relation to the value chain, um, what are your thoughts? So Dr. Evans spoke about accommodation. But do we really recognize Sailor, his head, as his role, his part, his, his in contribution to the value chain? Or do we even recognize immigration's role in the value chain or customs? Or, or we have, some, I think I'm seeing somebody from the, the planning department, yes. Do we recognize their role in the value chain? Maybe some persons do not even realize planning works very closely with the Ministry of Tourism. Or tour guides, or artisans, or craft people. We have CDC, we have... Do, do you really, when you think of tourism, 
let me hear, let us hear from you. Do you feel like we recognize you in the value chain or do you think we need to rethink how we link that value chain or how we, where we focus? And do, let me hear, let us hear, let Dr. Edwards hear from you. Planning? Well, first, the first question was um, before. I do think we should um, return to pre-COVID just because of the numbers, but um, not do things like pre-COVID. Actually capitalize more on, um, on the value chains and linkages, right? Mm -hmm. That's one question. Um, two was um, the diversity and, and linkages within um, the sectors. Um, that was a very difficult question. And, um, and um, I think um, there is need for more linkages and more diversity in the chains. But where do we start is, is that's, the, that's the real question here. Yeah. Where do we start changing? Where do we start diversity and, and um, creating those linkages? Um, where would you recommend? Where would I recommend? Um, so that's why you're here to help us start that thing because we're here to rethink tourism. Well, from the lecture today, um, it's so. It's, there's so much interconnections where we have public, private, where we have the government, non-government organizations. Um, I think it needs to be at, at the government and um, government standpoint, um, linking with um, private individuals to create that, that base and then take it off to the community level afterwards. That's just my opinion. Um, Thank you very much, thanks a lot. That, that certainly gives us somewhere to start. And I think that's a springboard, Dr. Edwards, any comment before we we hear? Is there anyone who has, because I think we, we have gotten some sense of where at least one of our partners would like us to start. Any other thoughts on where anyone else? Um, but how do you think we can Start already thinking in forging those linkages and ensuring at the same time we are sustainable economically, especially. All right. Um, for me, I, I do think uh, Dr. Edwards' suggestion of the council is very vital. Um, and this is Amanel speaking. It's not Amanel Tourism Authority, this is Amanel speaking. I do think that. <laughs> um, I was getting myself in trouble. Um, not I the quality say, development not manager. Not the quality development manager. I do think um, from the public sector, we need to start linking and connecting a lot more. Um, I do think the operating silos as ministries and agencies, etc., we are very sort of protective. You know, we, 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 we don't like to step on each other's toes or we say, who give you who give you the right to be with that? That's not your right or whatever. And I think we need to go past that. Sorry guys, so all the public sector people in the room. I do think we need to go past that in order for tourism to be really take off. Um, because there's so many issues connecting just on the public sector level is very difficult. And I don't think all of us have the understanding of tourism and what it takes for tourism to take off. That's just me speaking. So I think we need to connect, and I, like, I, I love Dr. Edwards' idea of the council that needs to come together with both the public sector and even more so the private sector. So I think that's one of the first things that we need to, to address and fix. Thank you, Alvin. I suspect we were wearing both hats when you spoke. No, I thought that was. Yes. Oh, you know, we 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 are involved in the public sector right now in the region. What we are seeing is that uh, public sector comes with a certain bureaucracy. It's just the way the public sector is designed. You are. Uh, and I'm talking, of course, what you, could, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking generally, but they are outriders. So you can tell me if you are outrider. On the public sector, you are 
hired to, um, and this is pure public, you are hired to a service commission or a police commission, which teachers commission, whichever you come in. You, if someone is off, you bring someone in. You are, you are a bureaucratic system, you must abide by this, you report to this. Now, what we are realizing more and more, that is good for the public sector. We need to get even ministries of tourism moving away from that. Because the nature of tourism, it's very dynamic. It, it needs changes for you to make decisions and even do things within. By the time you have to get approval, this is this. Now, some countries have gone into separating. Like if we look at Jamaica, Jamaica has separate, I Jamaica again. Maybe I'm saying Jamaica I was there last week. So they have separated everything. So product development, they are, um, fun, everything. There are many things that are separated just to move away from the public sector and have more autonomy. So you realize like tourism authorities tend to have more because they are they are um, legislated for that. But when you come back to the policy making as part of tourism, this is where you run into um, this is where you run into thing. I don't want to um, preempt what we believe that a Caribbean country and want to preempt and say who it is. They are coming out now. Within the new year, we will see a new model for ministries of tourism operation. And I say ministry clear those who fall under the in the public system for tourism. They are going to start a model and we want to see how it works in the Caribbean. It's trying to free up ministries of tourism. To, to be less, to be able to have the flexibility to work with each other and to not be silo and to not say you have to who where the authority is. And I'll give you the example of the Bahamas. Uh, you know, you still have to look at others, but you know what holds here. So in the Bahamas, the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism is set up as a department of tourism that hires, fires, everything in school. You still have a permanent secretary who is dealing. The permanent secretary manages the portfolio of government and of course all the monies. But they are set up in a system where they can get the, the, the individuals that is needed, get them according to the qualifications. They, have, they are the highest paid individuals in the whole public sector. Everybody wants to be in the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, but it requires certain things so you get better benefits. You have, and this is a ministry now, Ministry of Tourism, so you, you have your health benefits, you have travel, you, the way it's set up, it's this by design, just to make sure that you get the right people, the right quality, and that it's flexible, and then so they can do things, and then you don't have a public sector, public commission in there. But it, what I would suggest, you have to look at all models, but and then see what works best. But you did say what is right in the public sector system. We are a bureaucratic stream, and we have to you do this and you don't do that, and it's just. It's just the way things go. I hope we all evolve where ministries of tourism could be much more flexible and they don't have to break away product development or break away marketing and break away, which is what the Ministry of Tourism does. They have the marketing because they have the normal public sector things. And I am on the development side. So recently, uh, Tourism Development Corporation was established in the Bahamas for the very thing of linkages and sharing the benefits of tourism across working with small and medium enterprises, working with the people of the Bahamas. So that's the stream I am on at that agency. But yes, it's something we just have to recognize and, and work with. So I think that, that in effect talks to um, the some of the issues that you mentioned earlier. Um, in terms of how do we, in rethinking, do we keep the same systems? Do we switch up a bit? Do we come to a mid-ground? Things like that have to be considered when we are rethinking. 
sing ke? to have that discussion in the, the ministry. Um, but we are always open to persons calling, coming, contacting us for that kind of information. But again, Dr. Edward spoke to that because maybe it is we have not been using the correct channels to get that information out or to ensure that our, our partners or potential partners are aware of what, we, what, what are those benefits. Incentive. Incentives, every single Caribbean country has incentives for tourism. But what has happened recently, and this is what I think, is that the benefits for tourism should be packaged. It's a recommendation. It should be packaged under one. So you bring all of what, you can go to finance and get something, you can go wherever. You bring all of the benefits under, for every single area on the tourism in one. So for instance, if you're a craft vendor, you look at the value chain and you say, wait, who in there needs benefit? Every single area can get a benefit. What we are quite familiar with is the benefits for construction of hotels or construction. Now we know, we have done a, a review recently where we are giving in materials to build and we build a dive operation headquarter, a taxi association headquarter. So, but these are things that you have to look at and put them under one, rather than every time you have to run to finance to figure out or run, let's see, or write another cabinet paper to ask cabinet to give this particular sector. Everything that that's that comes with repackaging the incentives that are given for tourism development, especially now when you have small and medium enterprises, because the, one of the countries before, we said the best kept secret is the incentives that government gives. So it's not here, so don't feel it. No, I think it's it. generally across yeah, the board. But that's yeah, across the board. But it's now that's, that's an area that needs to be thinking as well. Any other thoughts? Sarah. We're going to be trying to wrap up in five minutes, so any thoughts, any final comments? 
it's not, it doesn't have to be a question, it can just be a comment, some feedback, anything that Dr. Edwards spoke to or spoke about. Go ahead, you can go ahead and then, yes. Yes, it's on. Okay. Um, appreciate it and I think you, you summed it up well because we cannot get rid of the leakages um, but how do we stem or stop that outflow that we are not drained in the process so yeah. and you know what um, I'm so glad economic planning I expect <laughs> economic planning <laughs> we always say economic planning have to deal with the leakage both we're supposed to deal with both leakages and linkages and you have to still look at revenue foregone and all of that. So what we say, just like leakages, no, leakages and linkages require two totally different indicators for it. So sometimes people say, oh no, if you don't have leakages, then you have linkages. It doesn't work like that. Linkages is one thing, leakages is another thing. It's two separate economic indicators you look to test any of them. That is why you still need to look at leakages and linkages. It's just that today we were looking at linkages, so we spoke about that. So the leakages, one of the, ex one of the key things you spoke about and who is in what positions in the industry. So yes, that's a particular area that, and, and critical areas are always like executive chefs. Now, bearing in mind you have to, even for leakages, you still have to look and see who who they're serving, but to make sure and train up um, locals accordingly. And you can, it, like I say, it can work both ways. You look at all of the value chain elements and see who is working there, who is doing what for the leakages, and then see how the leakages can work. Okay. Any comments, questions, uh, Raquel? For those who do not know, Raquel is our tourism planner. Yeah, absolutely.
you know, for some consideration be given for persons who are just have an eight seater or ten seater. Sure, if we're talking about the value chains and going forward post COVID, craft, um, the craft artisans, they also would like to have some level of concessions in terms of their um, materials. There's some materials that they have to import while we promote local um, use of local products for craft. There are times when they would have to import um, some items. So, what concessions are there? That's, I think that's why we are to lend your voice and let us know, you know, how do you see yourself going forward in the sector? What are some of the things that you think can be enhanced? You know, I'm, so, I'm seeing Miss Enzimbo, I'm seeing Miss uh, uh, Butte, yes. So if you could give us a voice, and I take what was said earlier with respect to consultation and meeting with you. We have been doing that, but I would want to agree with um, Ms. Scott, communications manager, with regards to going forward that we intensify our efforts to meet with you. It can be challenging at times, please bear with us, but we are willing to work along with you. Thank you. Any final comments, questions? And then we'd wrap up. I, I don't want to, I know how we are with time. We, we arrive late, but we like to leave early. So. <laughs> um, but no, we've had a, a long afternoon and, and it has been, it has been productive, it, productive, it has been fruitful, but we still, every, every voice here is valued, every organization, every person who is here present, we value your input. So any final comments or questions before we wrap up? Dr. Edwards Marlin says she wants to say Oh. Fully endorsed, and we, we do agree with that. And I will tell you, we just last week we were relooking our strategic priorities for the next year, and community involvement is top of that list because we, we recognize without our communities, we will not have a product. Um, we really won't. I mean, we have the natural resources, but we need the communities to ensure that when people come here, they have that experience because they're not just coming to go on the beach or to go to the waterfall or to go sailing or diving. They want to have that experience that includes all of the, the parties involved in, in, in ensuring that that product is an enjoyable and, and memorable one and the communities are at the core of that. So we thank you. May I ask which community group you're from? No, I'm with physical oh, you're with physical planning. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much.
when you get it, it's just really important because mm -hmm. that's one of the foundation of tourism in St. Vincent. Yes, I would um, <laughs> Thank you very much. There is something I don't, don't think, think we did. did. I'm not sure, but if you did not sign in when you came, we definitely would like to keep in touch with all of you. There must be something, some how we would want to ensure that the persons who are here at this lecture and persons who may have joined us virtually or who may look at this at some point or who may hear feedback from you because I know for the community groups and the organizations and ministries and departments that you will have to give some feedback and so we would like to keep in touch with you so if you didn't leave us a name or number or you didn't register please just do so on your way out Marlon could you facilitate that and we, when I said it earlier to Sinclair, it applied to everyone here. We are always open. We are here to work. So it's not just about what I have to do on my desk on a daily basis. That it is that takes priority and nothing else. Uh, I can. I don't think Sailor would mind me saying we we were at a uh, an event a few weeks ago on World Travel Market in London, and he called a few days later. I was in a, a meeting elsewhere, and he said. I'd like to come in to discuss something with you. And I said, I will clear my schedule one morning because it, I cannot prioritize something else over what one of our key partners in tourism, Sailor is very integral in the tour operator business, but tour operating business, but for me to hear from him and our permanent secretary joined that discussion. And it was very, very interesting. And some of the things that he put forward, there were things that we were thinking of, but he gave us a different perspective on them. So we do want to hear from you. And this lecture is only a part of it. It's Tourism Awareness Month. So we invited Dr. Edwards to help us to get the conversation ongoing, because it has started on many occasions, but pre, Pre-COVID, we were almost peaking, I would think, because our numbers were almost at the highest they've ever been in 2019. We have a lot of work to get back there. But I think what we all have to ask ourselves, not at the Ministry of Tourism or the Tourism Authority or National Parks or any of the arms of the ministry, not at our hotel association, but all of our stakeholders, all of our partners, if we're going to go back pre-COVID, what are we taking from it? I think Dr. Edwards is asking that. Um, what, what are we taking and what are we leaving? Because there are things that we would definitely have to leave. Some of the lessons we've learned. Just how we offer the service. Not, and we're not talking here just about international or regional visitors, to our local visitors, because during that COVID period, we saw how critical local tourism was to our economic sustainability. And that is part of what, I didn't hear many people speak about that in Dr. Dr. Edwards touched on it, but the local domestic tourism contributes significantly to our economic sustainability. So is that something now that we've learned from COVID? We, didn't, we probably didn't pay much attention to it. We knew it existed, but COVID taught us during that period, we relied heavily on domestic tourism. And so as we rethink tourism, as we forge our linkages for economic sustainability, we are hoping that a lot of the questions that Dr. Edwards posed this afternoon and the presentation that she made, that we will give it a lot of thought in our respective agencies, but that at some point we will be able to collaborate to ensure that when the Ministry of Tourism is able to put out whatever in product, in whatever we are doing, that we are doing it ensuring the linkages are created while the eco economic benefits are felt. I don't think a lot of, I mean, we, we, we probably were timid in saying it, but Dr. Edwards asks, how many of you feel the economic benefit of tourism? And it is something we have to, sorry, critically examine moving forward. The persons in finance and so on can give us the numbers and we can give you the 
arrival figures and all of that. But at the end of the day, what we want you to ensure, what we want to ensure is that every Vincentian feels that the tourism dollar has reached them in one form or another. And so I think, I don't know if Dr. Edwards has anything to add at this point or anyone from the Ministry or Tourism Authority, but I think on that note, I would like to thank you all for coming. Sinclair, yeah? Something is edging Sinclair, <laughs> yes. And on that note, I think definitely Sinclair, we will, I'm not sure, one arm of the ministry will take you up on that. Um, we have Jackie, who is a Toastmaster, so I'm sure she would like to take, to definitely see us taking that forward. But you, you said it well that the question was asked, and that's where I was just about going. We want to ensure that wherever you work, whether it's in public or private sector, you're self-employed, unemployed, whatever it is, that you are able to, to ultimately feel and benefit from tourism. And at, at this point, I would wish to thank you all for coming, for participating. But above all, I'd like to thank Dr. Edwards for presenting. I believe she gave us a lot of food for thought. Thank you so much, Dr. Edwards. And we look forward to your continued input and your, your valuable information being shared with us because we, all, we know that we have a lot of work to do. We are an emerging destination, as I said before, and we can learn from you and others who have experienced it, not just in your, your place of residence, but throughout the region. So I'd like to thank you again for coming, for being back in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You're always warmly welcomed here. And we thank all of our, our attendees this afternoon from the various ministries, from the private sector, from our partners, our key partners, Immigration, Customs, Port Authority in particular. We rely heavily on them to ensure that our work is done well and certainly from the persons who are directly involved in the sector. We thank you for being here. But above all, I'd like to thank, before I end, the persons who were behind the scenes in organizing this lecture. It was timely, it is timely, and I think we have been able to touch on a lot of issues that can help us to take us, can help to take us into 2023 and beyond. Mrs. Geraldine Charles Scott. She has worked. <laughs> she has worked tirelessly to get us to this point. I think she followed up and followed up with us time and time again, and the, the information was out there. And I trust that for those who have not been able to make it, if you know of someone who may have been interested, I believe VC3 brought it live on one of their pages. I'm not sure if anyone else brought it live, but please tell them to go back to VC3 or whoever else may have shared it. API is bringing it live as well, or they will be bringing it, I'm sure, in, in very well. Thank you as well, API. And so please let persons who may not have been able to make it Tell them to take some time to listen to Dr. Edwards' presentation and send us their feedback. We appreciate it. And if you were too shy to speak this afternoon, send us your feedback. 
an email, uh, call us or come to the office and we will be happy to hear from you. Thank you so much again for being here and please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Get home safely and remember tourism is everyone's business. Everyone. Thanks a lot.